welcome back. And now we're going to try to do some of these things that we talked about and looked at. And let's see how it goes when you actually have it in your own hands to do these sorts of things. And at least get started doing these sorts of things. So the first one, just making sure everyone could get these slides. All good? Should be in the same place as the other ones. So first thing, let's make an account so we can get started. You essentially just create your private user space so you can have your own searches and have your own information in there. So just go to massive UCSD.edu and then right up there at the top, click on this register button over there and you'll then be able to fill out your information. Let me know if that doesn't work. And your email address is really only used to send you back your search results. There's no other communication that you should expect in there other than that. So you can just fill in that information, click Submit, and that will create your account. steps. So the next thing is once you're done creating the account, let's check that it's working. Just log on at the top, use, put in the username and password and click the sign in button. <coughs> and let's make sure that everything's working as it should. using your username and account and password. Alrighty. So, how do we get started? Let's go and go to the home page and let's go and start by looking for the data set that we were talking about earlier. This IPRG study from 2015. Let's see how you can find it. The same kind of search can be used for pretty much any massive data set, of course. But just now, we're going to illustrate it by how you can search for that specific one. Whenever you search with a string in here, it will look for that word or words across all the fields of the data set, all the metadata fields. If it's in a description, if it's in a title, if it's in a PI, uh, any of those fields, it will find the data set for you. So just click the search button, and you will see a number of IPRGD data sets. There is more than one the, now in, in the system, uh, which is a good thing. These sorts of studies are the interesting, interesting studies that look at performance across the community and how people are doing different kinds of analysis, so it's good to have that data available. So can everyone see this one show up at the top? As you can see, there's also these <coughs> other fields that you can filter by or that you can extend and um, see information. So there's 15 shown up at the top of the page. Uh, you can, some of these things are closed up because there's more than one showing in there. You can, if you click the plus sign, it will open it. And if you wanted to filter by what species are in the data, you can also do that. Uh, sometimes, it's useful to do that. Let's say you were interested in TMT data, so you search for TMT, but then you only want mouse data. Okay, so you could go species, just center musculus in there, click the filter button here on the left, and you would get only those data sets. Okay, so it lets you filter to help you find the data sets you're interested in. 
But then once you're done, you looked at it, you found what you wanted, you can just click on the data set there on the left, and it should bring you to the data set page. Everyone able to get to here? Yeah. All right, so here we are live. That's the starting point, right? If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see all the reanalysis are <coughs> shown in there. And you see up here at the top also the metadata for this study. Um, and you'll see those operations at the top of the data set page. And note that you see these options even though you're not the owner of that data set. Okay? This is by design. This is something that we want to be able to provide is that any member of the community can do things with the data set. Uh, in particular, we talked about how we can reanalyze the spectra and add reanalysis. We're going to see a little bit about that. You can also comment on a data set. Um, for example, you could request metadata, or you could say, I looked at this data set and it's missing this file or that file, or um, I found this about the data set and here's the additional information. So that sort of thing can be added as a comment on a data set. And the next step we're going to take is we're going to go straight into the reanalysis. So we'll click on that reanalyze spectra button up there. And, and now that you click on that button, what it did was it imported the data set into your private space. So now you can use it to do whatever kinds of searches you want to do on that data set. The first thing it did is, is just, just assumes that you want to do a database search, and that's why it will have redirected you to the database search um, page. But what we want to do right now is not database search, but we're going to run the MaxQuant workflow, because we're going to do, uh, we're going to see how we can get some quantification results for this data set. Okay. So go back to the slide and click on this link for the Purdue Safe MaxQuant workflow. a way on Mac to make the window show over there. <laughs> on Windows, I just go sideways and it shows. Oh, there it is. It's just farther out. Okay. Now, how do I bring it back? <laughs> is it like a man or something? Oh, maybe it is. Yay, look at that. Where was it? Uh, it was hidden behind the, oh, yeah, the slides. Come on, have come in, So, uh, you should have seen this, and then log on with your username and password, because now we're in the data analysis <coughs> site. Yes? So for the workflow, we have to create a Right, so then go back to the slides. Yeah, and then click on this link, the Max One workflow, and that's how you're gonna get to this Otherwise, you're in the other one that is for database search, and that's not what we're going to do now. We're just going to use Max Quant with Andromeda for this particular. Yes. So I did that, and then a default would be back to the page. Me too. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. So, right here. So it should have shown you this. 
Oh, you, you mean after? after we logged in. Oh, I see. Okay, just click it again. Yeah, that's a lot of steps. And now we should stay with having been logged on. Oh my gosh, stay there. <laughs> okay. If you click on it again, does it stay? This is the state we want to get to, is that the login box is no longer there because you're logged on, and it stays on this workflow. Okay, all right. And back there, same thing too? Also, okay. Everyone able to get to this page and, no? What's happening? So now that's new information. If you're looking at the slides, not in Adobe Acrobat or something like that, but if you're looking at them in uh, Chrome or a browser, it removes parts of the link. And that's why it doesn't go directly to the workflow it was supposed to go, because it's processing the link. Oh, yeah. okay. If it does that, then you need to click here to select the workflow. And there's a long list of workflows in there because there's a lot of different things you can do with data. So this link goes directly to the workflow, but of course, if the browser chops off the link, then yeah, that doesn't go directly to the workflow. So hopefully, are you being able to get to this now, everyone? So worst case scenario, please just select it from the drop-down box to get to the workflow. Okay, anyone not there? Okay, good. So then let's go to the next step. And you can just give it, uh, so there's the max font workflow. Let's give it some title. You can write something like massive dot font by PRG or however you want to name your workflow. So that's the first thing. Just give a name to the job that you're going to run. And you should pick something you like and you're comfortable with because we're going to go through the steps of making it public. Okay, so just don't say, what am I doing with this thing? <laughs> it's okay, but then we'll make that one public. <laughs> we can pick another one. Um, Quick question. Yeah. Would there be any issue of having like space within the title? Of nope. It, like, you know, no, anything you'd like. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to select the input files that we're going to use for the analysis. Okay. And as a part of that, we will be uploading some data. But before we get into the upload data, I want to make sure you're able to get to the title and then click 
on this option here, select input files. It doesn't matter which of the four buttons you click, they all go to the same place. Okay, just any time you select a file, there's a button that takes you to the file selector box. Okay. Everyone able to get to a pop-up that looks like this? Okay, so the next step is go to this second tab that says upload files, and that's when you should see something like this. Okay, this is the easier way to upload uh, smaller files. If you're uploading larger files, it's recommended that you use an FTP client, as I mentioned in the, in the previous lecture. But uh, here we're only going to upload a couple of small files to run the maximum analysis, so it's fine to use this UI. So you should see also on the left something that looks like this. There are two shared folders that can include standard proteomics databases, uniprot databases for several species, as well as spectral libraries, also um, community libraries for different species. Then you should see the data set having been imported into your user space. So when you click on that reanalyze button for the data set, this is what it did. It essentially imported it into your user space that now you can use it for any reanalysis you want to do. And all of this is private right now in your space. So whatever reanalysis you do here, it's yours. And only you have access to it. Then you have your own home directory. In this case, Ben created the slide so it shows his directory name, not yours. And then spectral libraries under here are metabolomic spectral libraries, which we won't be using. So that's what it, essentially what it means in there. This case, the username is Ben Pullman, but you should see the username that you created over here for your view, right? Everyone sees that? All right, that's where your files will be. So we'll select, select that because that's where the uploads will go. When you drop something in here, it goes into whatever you selected on the left. Now we're going to drag and drop these two files, which you can get from there. Okay, so on the top right, number one, also shown at the top over there, if you click save this annotations file and save the maxquant parameters file. Okay, so the annotations file is where you specify the metadata of what are the different conditions in your sample and how you want to, what you want to compare to what. And then the maxquant parameters are the files that are used to actually run maxquant. So when you use the maxquant user interface, there's an option to save an XML file with the search parameters, and that is what is then used. Everyone, able, everyone else able to get the two files? Okay. So you need to uh, upload those. So now the next step is drag and drop those two files you just saved. You might have saved them on your desktop, you might have saved in a different folder. So wherever it was that you saved them, just drag and drop into the box. And they will get uploaded into your user directory in the system. So let's try that and see if, it's, see if that works right. If you're able to find it and do the drag and drop into the box. If you do that, you can then go to the select input tab and open your home directory. You should see the files in there, the files that you just uploaded. Okay, so if, you, if all went well, they will show up in the system that you can now use them as inputs to other things. All right, so then, a couple of notes. Next one is just what is this experiment format? How is it represented in here? It's very similar to what you have for NSTAT, but there's a couple of extra fields that have been added to describe a bit more metadata about the experiment that is not necessarily used immediately by NSTAT, or is something that in the same experiment you might want to do different kinds of questions. So sometimes you have time points, you have different conditions, you have different uh, individuals or cell lines. So there's a close mapping to the MS stats format, but it's um, a couple more columns in there. So some of them are the same, but like data set, for example, obviously is not something that MS stats uses, 
but it's useful for us to know what file or data set comes from. Then run is the file name of the mass spec run. Cohort are groups according to study variables. Uh, in some cases might be drug treated versus not. In some cases it might be healthy or health or, or disease. Um, subject, different bioreplicates. Condition, uh, it could mean the different uh, time points are shown here also, but it could be the treatment of a drug that is used for one group but not the other. Bioreplicates and experiments, essentially the same meaning as we had um, for this sense. Uh, the condition would have to do with, let's say, um, you, what kind of drug treatment you did on that. So for example, in some cases the cohort will mean the group of cell lines that you're treating something with, but then the condition is which drug did you treat it with. Um, and then you know within that you might have time points or dilution series or other kinds of variables that are also part of that study. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so in this case, this is the definitions that we'll use for this particular experiment where we have, you can sort of, there's four different conditions and uh, they were run in, tripli in triplicate. So there's sample one, three of them, and then there's ABCs, and then that is shown here, uh, condition one, and then the, all the same bioreplicates but different experiments. So now, how do we select this? So this is where we go back to the pop-up box and you click on the select input files part. And now you should see the files that were uploaded in your home directory. <coughs> when you open your home directory, you should see the two files that were uploaded. And then you open the data set and you can see the files that are there in the data set for anyone to reuse. Okay, and in particular, there's a sequence directory that has the FASTA file with the database that we're going to use to run the analysis. Okay. So can everyone see these things here on the left? You should be able to see both the data set and your uploaded files. If you can see that, we can start selecting some of them. So for example, a folder in a data set, you'll see it highlighted. And then you add it to the set of spectrum files by clicking this button, and you should see it appear over there under spectrum files. Okay, so select it here on the left, click spectrum files, and that's just added to the spectrum files used for this analysis. Okay, in this case, it's going to be all the raw files. You, if you add something by mistake, just select it in there and can't, then click the red X to delete it from the collection. Good. Everyone get it? Okay. So now we're going to do similar things for a couple of others. Uh, the next one, let's add the database. So just select the FASTA file, add it to database files, and again, it should show up there under that collection database files and we're going to continue for the others the annotations file IRPRG.csv is going to go in selected annotation file and with the final one we're using in here is the max one parameters uh, just select in here max one parameters and it will show there okay so fully configured fully configured files will look like this. You should see these four matching what we see here on the slide. Can everyone see that? Everyone on board? Okay, so if that's working, if all looks right, you can just click 
finish selection. And that's it. It is configured to run the search, so it should now bring you back to the page where we were with the input form from Xploit. And you can just click, excuse me, you can just click submit to start the job. And once you do that, you should see a page that looks like this, telling you that you just launched your first search job or reanalysis job. All right, so MaxQuant, the good news is it runs on a Linux cluster, so we can run this on the background and just let it be. The not so good news is that it still takes quite a bit of time. So definitely this search won't be done in the time uh, that we have for this session. So once it is done, you'll get an email telling you that your search is done, and you can click on the link in that email and go back to this page. At that point, the job will be finished. And then you will see something that looks like this. But now, just so we can move forward and see what the next steps would be once that job completes, uh, we're going to use a copy of a job that was already run exactly the same way as you ran yours, and we're going to look at how we can explore it. So if you click on the link here, it'll take you to a page for a job that is essentially identical to yours, but um, it's already finished. And when we ran this, it took about 24 hours. Um, so for now, let's just use this one. That's what I like. Can everyone see it? So a couple of points um, before actually even moving forward to the next steps in here. Uh, notice that <coughs> what just happened here. You're looking at the search results from someone else. Okay. In this particular case, we ran it with the purpose of sharing for this um, training activity. But you can also do that yourself if you want to share your results to someone with a collaborator or someone else in the lab, etc. If you just take the link from that page and you share it, then others can also access it and look at it. Okay. Now, the chances that anyone is going to guess one of your links and do something with it is ridiculously low. If you look at the size of that random string that shows in there, it's just not going to happen. Okay. It's almost, if it does happen, they almost deserve a prize. <laughs> if they hit results that mean anything to them, um, it's not going to happen. But it gives you the ability to share results with collaborators, or if you want, uh, in your papers, you can even put a direct link to the results that support uh, your conclusions. Okay? So there's that ability that the link is sort of a permanent record for that job, for those search results, and it's something that you can share. Yes? Uh, yes, as it is now, it is view only. Uh, there's nothing else you can do with it. Uh, you can, well, you can download and you can interact with it online in a sense that you filter, you sort, and whatnot, but you can't change it. So from that perspective, that's, that's totally the same. Oh, and another thing I also wanted to mention is that see this inconspicuous button here that says club? This is a very useful button because if you find one of your data sets or for one of your uh, uh, experiments, you can just go back to a job that you ran in the past, you click clone, and it makes an exact copy of that search. Why is that useful? For two reasons. One, you might want to run a search that's similar to the previous one, but slightly different. So you can change some parameters to click go. You don't have to reconfigure the whole thing. Two, it gives you information of what you did the first time. It tells you all the parameter values, all the database selections, everything is fully satisfied. And three, it lets you take the exact same search protocol, now change the data, and run it on a different experiment, or run it on a different data set. Okay, so it has, it really helps with those three things by just using that clone button over there. Okay. All right, but for now, what we're looking at is, let's see some of the results that we get as an output for this. If you click the View Features um, option, it will show the results for Max1, okay? the features that are output by Max1. 
In this case, with the Andromeda modifications, because we ran it uh, in this max one only mode, if we have time at the end, we can see how to run it with MSGF plus. But for now, this is just a self-contained Andromeda type of search. And you can see the identifications that it has, where the identifications come from, directly from the MS, multiple MS, whether it fits by alignment between the multiple runs, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is just essentially the typical features that are output by MaxPoint that you can then use as input to an ascent. Was everyone able to see this? So another thing you might have noticed is that uh, even though this is 360,000 rows, it kind of loads relatively quickly because it is running this on a server side and it only sends you 30 results at a time. So it's only the page you're looking at. It doesn't force you to download everything because you're not likely to want to look at everything. So if you want to filter, if you want to sort, it does all of those things on the server side and then sends you only the ones you're interested in. So it's to some extent dangerous because it allows me to do this on my phone and then that can get addictive. <laughs> Anywhere you are, you can go and look at it and that's both a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> um, but it does let you do that. And if you want to download, uh, you can download the whole thing with the download button over there. But for what we're going to need in here, um, there are kind of larger files. So rather than just downloading it, uh, over there, which would download uh, the uncompressed table. It's just better to click on this download link directly from the status page, and that will download all the files that we need to run MS stats. So if you click on there, you'll see a view that looks like this. You don't want to see any results, you just want to click download and download the zip file to your computer, which will contain what we need to save, to, to run Let's try that. Hopefully, everyone can get. All righty. So we have those, and what you'll see is that inside of those, you have these three files: evidence (TSV), proteins (TSV), and the annotations that can be all directly used with MS stats. Okay. So this would be. Pretty much for any max quant analysis that you want to run on any data set or on your own private data, it would generate these three files that you can then use as input to MS stats. Okay, it just runs it automatically for you and gives you uh, these files. So now let's actually do that. So you can download this script here. This was originally put together by Mina and it's attached to the original Max1 reanalysis and essentially runs the R script with the MS stats command to do the reanalysis of this IPRG data. And as you know by now, it's a great way to be able to see exactly what it is that's happening with the analysis. You can just open the script and it gives you all the details of how the analysis is. So now let's do that. Let's download the script and run it on the data that was in the zip file. Might take a bit to run. I don't know when you ran it, how long it took. For us, it's about an hour, an hour and a half to run the MS stats analysis on these IPRG files. Five minutes? All right. We have a challenge. <laughs> let's see it. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it in real time. That'd be great. So if you just put everything in the same directory and you run that R script, hopefully we should be able to get those results. I presume at this point uh, everyone has R installed and has run in a stats analysis, right? <laughs> One or two. Seems like we need to rename a file in the R script. Do we have it installed in here? R? No. It is? On this laptop. Oh, there it is. Okay. 
Well, I, it's not. It's just showing on the browser. Um, I don't actually need to run it. I just wanted to be able to see the file. So actually, what we need to do is this. Uh, the script should have been updated. I thought we had the last version in here, but this should be evidence.txt, not evidence updated. So in the R script, just please update this read table uh, command to say evidence.tsv to match the file name that we just downloaded. And then you should be able to run the script. All right, for everyone else, it's cr cranking through the numbers. All right, so let's let it run for a little bit. Five minutes. <laughs> we'll see what we get there. But um, let's give it a couple more minutes. Then we'll see how to create an RMSV for sharing results. Anyone for whom the analysis has finished? So let's let's then go and check the RMSV part. We can then come back to NS stats um, when it ends. But essentially, let's say that you now want to make this um, a shared reanalysis that you want to share with others. So the first thing you can do if you owned this task. So remember, you launch the max one task. And that is going to take close to 24 hours to finish. So you don't have your own job. If you did, you could import that job and use it to make a reanalysis. But because this is not your search, you cannot attach someone else's search as a reanalysis. Okay? You can see it, but because you don't own it, you're not allowed to use it to submit uh, a new reanalysis. But, excuse me, what we're going to do is so we're going to go back to the data set page and when we're on the data set page we're going to click the other button we first clicked reanalyze spectra when we did our own search but now we're going to add a reanalysis to the data set so just go back to the data set and then click add reanalysis so for the add reanalysis you can just click on that button and then we're going to have these collections that we're going to fill in. And for this particular data set, uh, we'll be using this container down here. So we're going to add the reanalysis to this container that says CCMS reanalysis from training activities. If you wanted to create a new identifier for your reanalysis, you can choose the other option here that says new container. Okay, and that's what you would do if you want your reanalysis to be a part of your publication. Okay, you just create a new identifier, and that's what you can then submit uh, with your publication. If the original data set was a proteome exchange data set, this one isn't because we're just using it here for <coughs> training activities. But if it was and it had a, a PXD identifier, then you could request an RPXD. Uh, which would be a proteome exchange identifier for a reprocessed data set or a reanalysis. But as it is right now, you can just go with this default container, and that's where we're going to add the reanalysis. Can everyone see that option there? Then we're going to select input files, and we're going to input the quantification results for the reanalysis. So click on that, select input files, and it's going to bring us back to this view where we now want to construct this set of results. Okay, there's some quantification results that we're going to put in, and we're also going to put in some 
methods and protocols that we used to do the analysis. So under this CCMS School 2019, you have this folder, MQ Andromeda. You can expand it, and you should see those files. And in there, we have the annotation CSV, evidence CSV, and the proteins, which were the input that was given to MSSAS. Okay, this is exactly the file that you used as input for MSSAS. So get select those in there. And you can just add application results, click on the application results button, and it should add them there on the Can everyone see that? So what we're going through now is the step to make your reanalysis public. Okay? Everything that you've done so far, completely private. It's all yours, no one no one's business but yours, okay? This is the steps that you need to take to make it public. And <clears throat> there's a couple of additional steps on purpose. I mean, we don't want it to be public by mistake, obviously. It should only be if you really want it to be public. And second, you should make sure that you're actually getting the right files that you want to make public. Okay, so if you ran a various number of analyses on your data, you want to select exactly which ones you're trying to make. So that's what we're selecting here now, is which of these are the files that you're going to make public. Okay, so the first three files were the ones that used as input, the mess tasks. Okay, the next one uh, is the script here that was used to run the analysis. We can now also upload it, and in this case, we're going to put it under methods and protocols, so click the methods and protocols button to add it in there. Last thing here is also the raw spectra, which will go in the raw files collection. So is everyone able to construct this view as shown here on the right? The Mac MS stats results are also here. It's now hidden under number seven. <coughs> but this one test result by MS stats should also be included in the quantification results. It's the fourth entry in there. Can everyone see the right hand side as shown? bit unfortunate that this is truncated because of the long file names uh, in here. This is the R script in methods and protocols, but this is the test results. And we, unfortunately, you only see the start of the file name, and that's the same in both, but it's two different things. This is the R script, this is the actual results. And the other thing that was added here, this MQ Andromeda max one folder, which is here, if the files that were used as input to Max1, remember the IPRG file that you downloaded and the XML file that you downloaded, those are also part of explaining where the results come from. Okay, so those should also be included in the reanalysis, and that's why this folder is also included here. Okay, so if you expand it here on the left, you would see that it has those two files, the IPRG file. So anyone not seeing this? All right, everyone there? Yeah. All right. So for there, uh, just click finish to close the close this window. We're done with that. And now, uh, if you go back to the RMSV page. So down here, added analysis.
So make sure to also fill in the title. You can give it a description for what you did in the reanalysis. And once you're done with that, you can click submit at the bottom and make your own reanalysis. So it will ask you to enter a title in the description. And there's a minimum amount of text you need to enter for that. Just make sure you have that in there too. And as some of you go through the process, we will see them starting to show up down here on the data set page. So let's see who gets the first one. starting to get a couple. There's 10 and 11. So you're starting to see just what it takes, how easy it is to share it once you have it. search, you know, 50 million spectra in one take, yeah, it needs to parallelize, otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's see where we're at. All right, getting a few in there, but still more, so let's see. If you're running into issues, let me know. So everyone's getting this error that says no valid root directory? Yeah. yeah. So I guess there's something going on right now, unfortunately, you know, move the law. It's got to happen or, uh, at the worst possible time, right? <laughs> so I guess for some reason there's a, an issue in the system right now that the data set is not allowing us to do these proper reanalyses, which is unfortunate. Uh, but you did everything right. Nothing else needed to be done differently. I guess the slight good news is that you can still see some of the reanalyses we're showing up here, even though you're getting that error. Um, though obviously you shouldn't be getting that error because the reanalysis was properly submitted. Um, but unfortunately it's showing that and I think that is something on the server side that we're going to need to fix. Uh, it will definitely look into that. Um, but in terms of submitting the reanalysis, that's pretty much all you would have needed to do and it should have just shown up here. So if you now open one of these, like let's say we open the dot eight reanalysis, uh, you would see the new RMSV, which should be the one that you generated. And if you click results attachment job, it will tell you who did the reanalysis and you can see all of the files that were used for that. If you just wanted to look at the results, you don't need to go in there. You can just go straight to browse quantification results. And that will show you the quantification files that were added to that collection. Okay. And this will show exactly the same thing for your job submission because we added, excuse me, we added pretty much the same files to those. Okay. And that's also what um, we have on the slides, but let's say you click here on the MaxSpline test result 
by MS stat. And that's where you would get this familiar view of the MS stats results. Okay, so once you get in here, let's see if you're able to filter for the significant results in this view. Was everyone able to stay with me up to this point to get to this view? Or did I lose some people along the way? I'm sorry? Okay, so this starts back in, uh, okay, let's see here. Just go to, on the data set page, click on this one, 248.8. This reanalysis is complete in there. And then I can just go from there again. Browse quantification results on that reanalysis. And then you can just click on the test result by MS stats at the top of the table. And that takes you to the MS stats results. Got it. Everyone else able to get to that? On that results view, select for the significant results. How would we do that? How, would you, how do you determine which MS stats results are significant? That's right. So you can just go to this column over here. And how do you want to filter it by? Adjusted p-value, what values? So you can just adjust the upper limit center there, 0.05, and then you can click the filter button on the top left of the table. And if you don't, if you want only the results with no issues, you can also enter NA in the issue column, and then click filter again, and get only results that have no issues reported. And if you'd like, of course, you could also download those results. Uh, for offline analysis if you wanted to do that. So that's pretty much what we also would have here in terms of next steps. You can go to the data set, pick a reanalysis, browse quantification results, takes you to those pages, and that's where you can do the filtration as we discussed. Questions on the process? sense how things go in, how you can get it out, how you can filter it, how you can filter it. And one example that is shown here, a question? Can I, I hope, I hope it's not a stupid one. Did no, we upload sorry. our own database or was there a selection of, of pre-selected uh, pre data files, sequence file? For the max one? Sure. Yeah. Oh, sure, you can totally do that. Yeah. So when you upload files, you can upload FASTA files, raw files, spectrum files, um, and then configure your searches using any files you like. Okay. You can, as long as the database is a FASTA, it's totally fine. And for situations where you pretty that is if you're doing some sort of meta analysis, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it's your own transcriptional file that yeah. was translated yeah, absolutely. That's always an option. So this particular uh, reanalysis that we did here illustrated that in the sense that we took a FASTA file from a data set, meaning it doesn't have to be a database that is in the system. It could come from any data set, it could come from any source, and it could come from your own private user space. Yes? The only way that the headers are used is that you expect that the first part after the carrot is just going to be the identifier for the protein, and then is followed for whatever text, which is a description of the name of the protein or whatever other information you'd like to have in there. But it doesn't try to parse it beyond that. Uh, essentially, that first segment is separated from the rest by a space, and if it finds vertical bars as in the Unipro format, it understands that that might be multiple things. That it's just different identifiers for the same thing. 
But other than that, it, it just takes the text as is. So there's no particular rule for what the headers would need to look like. Any other questions on how the system runs and how we get things out, get things in? Okay. All right, so since we have a little bit more time, I just wanted to also quickly We can also quickly see how we could launch a reanalysis, a max one analysis that does not use Andromeda search results, but actually uses MSTF plus search results. And we're using this as an example because you could really use any MZ tab identifications. Uh, MSTF plus is just one example that we have in the system of how that can be done. But if you have your own search engine that outputs MZ tab then you can just use those identifications for this analysis and then just tell Max Quant to go and integrate the features to give you the expression level for those identifications. Okay. So essentially the way that we would do that, uh, here with an MSGF job is we import to reanalyze task data. Again, you can only do that if you own the task. Um, but then you would go back to the max quant workflow, you fill it in as we did before, but now you will use this MC tab identifications option. Okay, that before we just left uh, empty, but now when we use this option, what it does is tell the max quant workflow, don't run Andromeda. We want to use these identifications instead. And if you're just doing MSGF or Andromeda, the difference might be you use different modifications, or you use different enzyme digestion rules, or you use a different database, or you know any of those could be reasons why you want to import your own search results. Um, or it was it could have been because you ran a search engine that looks for modifications that these two don't. Right. So for example, if you ran a Maestro search, that was another way in which this could be done is just to take the MZ tab that results from that and use that analysis here. Okay, so that's essentially the only thing you have to do is select an MZ tab file for that and then to not have a FASTA file so that Andromeda is not run by that okay. And then after that, the reanalysis that you run with MS stats is pretty much the same thing. Uh, the MS, the max one workflow will just generate the same files, the evidence file, the proteins file, uh, and then you can just take that and use as input to MS stats just as we did with the previous example. Okay, does that make sense? So essentially, what, what it gives you is a generic max one workflow that can be used for integration of intensities for any identity. And then you can use that to run MS stats, and then you can use that to make a reanalysis that you can submit and share or compare with others that are already in the system. Okay. So that's all we have for this session. I'll be glad to answer questions if you have any, but uh, I hope this gave you an idea of where we are in terms of adding more information to data sets and things that you can already do with data sets and things that you can reuse from the data sets. So I'd be very glad to answer questions now, obviously, but also afterwards. If you try to use some of these things and it's not immediately clear how to go about doing it, I'd love to hear from you because, as I mentioned, our view for this is it has to work for you. If it doesn't give back to the research projects that you're running on a daily basis, then that data is still not being useful for the community as a whole. So the question is, how do we make it more useful? So if you have other ideas, thoughts, there's ways in which you'd like to use it, but it's not immediately easy or obvious, we'd love to hear that too. So with that, if there's no other questions, I guess we can close the session for now, but- Thank you so more. much.